How can you maintain legacy Python code bases? Great question by a reader. And in this video, I'm going to give some thoughts around the topic. So let's define what a legacy Python code base is. So generally, when people refer to legacy code, they mean code that has aged a little bit, you know, we're talking about an older code base, maybe this is some code written in uh, Python 2.5, 2.6, um, Python 2 in general, or maybe it's, you know, it's even older, it's in a system that's kind of uh, hobbling along on Python 1. And it's never been upgraded to the latest version of the language. And so now you've been assigned the task to maintain a code base like that. In, in general, I think you have two choices there. Either keep it on life support, keep it running as is, don't upgrade to a newer version of Python. Or option two, you're gonna upgrade it to a newer version of Python, you're going to take the code, um, you're going to make some refactorings, and you're going to make it work, you're going to take the existing code base, you're going to make it work on a more recent version of Python, or uh, on the latest version of Python even. So these are kind of the two options that you have really, right. And uh, there are a couple of strategies you can um, you can apply to to each of them. So if you want to maintain the existing code base, which in a lot of cases will make um, the most sense or will make a lot of sense. Like generally, um, it is very hard to rewrite an existing code base without introducing bugs. And so upgrading a, a Python one code base to Python three, if it's a lot of code, that could be um, a very, very stressful, a very, very tough project. Um, not saying it doesn't make sense, but it is often very hard to make a real good business case for doing that. You know, if you're asking me like, what would I do as a sort of idealistic developer? totally, I would upgrade it and, and rewrite it in Python three and make it super nice and, you know, add linters and everything. But sometimes that is not the smartest business decision. You know, if this thing generates value, maybe you don't want to touch it and you want to focus on something else or your employer wants you to focus on something else. So you know, if you have to maintain a legacy code base, then um, that's that's just a reality of it. And you can do some things to make your life a little bit easier if you're maintaining a legacy Python code base. So maybe you can package the whole thing up into a virtual machine. So at least you don't have to worry about future OS updates breaking your application. You know, maybe maybe you can do things like that, that basically seal this thing off and kind of preserve it and keep it hobbling along. And hopefully you don't have to make too many changes to it. Now, if you're going the other route, and you want to take an existing code base and upgrade it to the latest version of Python, then that's an entirely different game, right, then you're likely rewriting um, at least parts of the application to make it work with newer versions of Python, you don't always have to go all the way and let's say upgrade from uh, from Python 2.2 to uh, Python 3.7 or 3.6, whatever the latest version is at the time. Um, sometimes it can just make sense to go to the latest version of Python 2, for example, you know, it's a lot more work to go from Python 2.2 to Python 3, um, compared to going from Python 2.2 to Python 2.7. And Python 2 is going to be around for a long time. So if you're on 2.7, then you know, that gives you some more mileage out of the existing code base without having to make uh, more drastic changes. And really, those I think are the two main options that you have for maintaining a legacy Python code base, either keep it around, make it bearable, or upgrade it to the latest version or a newer version of Python. All right, I hope this was helpful. If you've got any tips to share on how to work with legacy Python code bases, then please leave a comment below. If you've got a request for a video that you'd like me to make on Python or software development in the future, then please also leave a comment and I'll try and cover that in a future video. All right, thanks so much for listening and happy Pythoning.